Diablo 4's Season 4 is nearly upon us. There's quite a bit changing, so there's some renewed interest in the game. If you're coming back after a long break, we're going to go over some things that might be good to keep in mind as you're jumping into this season. Or if you have been playing consistently and you know following along with updates, we're going to go over some quirks uh, as well that may not be things that are going to be at the front of your mind or will be weird new interactions with things that are changing for this season. Let's jump in. The big change this season is the itemization overhaul. Blizzard's been talking about this a lot, most of you guys probably know about this already, but the short version essentially is that there's a different pool of affixes now, which can drop on all items. Hopefully these affixes are more punchy, they're more powerful, that's how it felt in the PTR, so I'm pretty optimistic about this. Um, but essentially all, all items now are going to kind of have this different pool. They're going to be of a different flavor. There's going to be a different number of affixes. One thing to note here is that this won't affect old items at all. They'll be kind of marked as legacy items. Um, and they'll still be usable and everything, but it seems that they're going to be a substantially lower power level. There's nothing you have to do here, but all of your existing items from previous seasons and on the Eternal Realm will be this kind of delineation between old and new items after this patch. Moving on from there, the next big change is with Helltide. So Helltide has been not completely overhauled, but it feels pretty different to play now. There's a new threat meter that's kind of like a wanted system that's akin to some of the things we've seen in the previous seasons, but it'll essentially give you an incentive to kind of keep pushing in Helltides and more difficult um, and more rewarding enemies will appear in the Helltides as you play through them. There's also now a change that'll make Helltides available in World Tier 1 and World Tier 2. It's also, at least in the PTR, this was also the quickest way to level. Um, there's no tortured gifts at those first and second tier. They're mystery chests instead. But um, again, this is just going to be a super efficient way to level. And this is, if you're trying to min-max, Helltides seem to be the way to go uh, as you level characters up from uh, 1 to 100 um, to get them ready for the end game. The Pit is another big system. Uh, it was introduced in the PTR. It's kind of a new... Um, version of Greater Rifts from Diablo 3, if you're familiar, but essentially it's this kind of, they kind of run alongside Nightmare Dungeons. Some would say they're kind of the new meta endgame instead of playing Nightmare Dungeons. The pit will be this ultimate challenge where there's a hundred tiers and you'll see how far into the pit you can get with a given character. There's a 10 minute timer on there and every time you die it decreases the timer. It's a super challenging and uh, rewarding system to play through. It feels like there's a lot more longevity there. Um, the pit is also the only way that you'll get crafting materials for masterworking, which is the one of the new crafting systems. Before we get to that though, let's talk about tempering a little bit. Tempering is the first of the two new crafting systems. I'll, I did a video on the tempering and masterworking system. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, I'll have a link to the video here so you can go check that out. Um, but essentially, tempering doesn't require these new mats we just talked about. It requires existing mats in the game and gold, if I recall correctly. Um, but the interesting thing to note is that tempering, there's a rolling mechanic in tempering where you will have these tempering manuals that you will use to put new affixes on the new flavor of items we just talked about. But something to note there is that there's a range on these rolls, and you might not always get the roll you want. And items can only be tempered so much. There's a number of tempering charges per item. But what that equates to is that tempering can kind of soft brick an item where if you don't get the roll you want, you can end up with an item that just kind of is basically useless for you. You can push your luck to the point of an item being useless. Um, again, you have quite a bit of control on what's rolling here, but... There is, there is a random element. I think it is a rewarding system. I'm sure there's going to be some mixed feelings, but something to keep in mind is the tempering system has the capacity to make items not super optimal for your build. But once you're through tempering and you have a good item as a base, the new kind of blacksmithing system is the masterworking system. With masterworking, there's a much higher limit on the kind of power that you can achieve with every item. There are 12 ranks. Um, in the PTR, there was a chance every time you did a masterwork on an item, upgraded an item, a masterwork tier, it could fail and you'd burn the materials. That's been removed, but masterworking still does require those materials from the pit, which we talked about a second ago, so they're a little bit more scarce. You're going to be incentivized to go push into the pit, kind of make your build hum as best it can, try to optimize um, to get these materials more quickly. And every four ranks of masterworking, one of the affixes on your item is going to get a big bump. So as you're leveling up, as you're masterworking, as you're leveling up an item, or leveling up all of your items, 
it's best to kind of go in sets of four. So like, say you want to start with your chess piece, level that up four times and hit that first checkpoint. And then if you want to upgrade something else, so you're not just pushing chess piece, go do the other one, but try to do them in sets of four so you can get those big affix bumps because they will measurably uh, improve your build. While we're on efficiency and farming, uh, Blizzard is also adding tormented versions of all of the ladder bosses, those kind of end game bosses. Um, what these are is they're a more challenging version, a significantly more challenging version. In the PTR, they required like five times the amount of summoning materials and they'd give you five times the reward. But now that ratio has been adjusted where I think it's like three times the normal materials, but you still get five times the reward. So these are definitely going to be the most efficient way if you can consistently clear these at this tormented tier, this higher difficulty. Um, they're also adding Andariel, which will be fun to see. We'll have a new challenge there. Um, but yeah, this will kind of be the end game meta. If there's anything that these drop that your build requires and you need to farm it, the tormented tormented echoes will be the way to go um, but yeah, they're going to be a little bit more of a skill check so kind of go in with that expectation and check those out if you're curious what builds to run what might have the best luck on these um, max roll already has up uh, build guides and they have like boss farming guides leveling guides just general uh, guides with tiers on where they think these builds are going to fall this season they've had pretty consistent um, accuracy in the past um, unless there's anything that substantially changes here, especially because we had an access to a PTR and we've got notes on what has changed since then, this will probably be fairly solid. Again, some of these might change a little bit, but you can kind of go in and have a couple ideas of what you want to run and then keep an eye out shortly following launch, and I'm sure there'll be some updates here. Um, but if you're curious what to run, give it a look. That being said, with these new updates that kind of make all items a little bit better because those base affixes like we talked about are a little stronger, I think that most builds, or most classes will have at least a few viable builds for pushing that end game. Um, I'd be surprised if there's any that just feel like, you know, bad and you're just going to get carried because there's no way you can get, say, a, a rogue up into that kind of meta level. Um, so I wouldn't sweat it too much, but if you are curious, you want to optimize and blast through the season, give the max rolls tier guides a look. I'll have a link in the video description. If you guys have any questions on builds or you're just kind of trying to decide what to run or really just questions about anything in the season uh, at all, feel free to leave a comment um, or hop in the Discord. I'll have a link to that in the video description as well. Um, I'll also be streaming on Twitch uh, for a couple of days after launch pretty consistently throughout the day, so feel free to hop over there. I always appreciate the community and I love to hear from you guys, so feel free to reach out. Finally, let's talk a little bit about the new big quality of life stuff, the Codex of Power changes and the Greater Affix changes. Let me move my camera here so you guys can see what we're talking about. Okay, cool. So this is just a screenshot from the little latest Diablo Loot Reborn video. Um, but the thing I want to focus on here is there's a couple of new icons, um, as you can see in the lower right, uh, on these items in the, in the inventory of the uh, character they've got pulled up here. So you can see these little white and orange X's. What those indicate is that there is an item here that has a uh, legendary affix on it that you do not have as high of tier of in your Codex of Power. So when you salvage that item, it'll give you a permanent version that you can use in the Codex of Power to imprint upon your items and, and you know, like give them that version, that role of that legendary affix. So say it's, you know, like 10%, 10 to 15% damage increased on blood spells and you've got like a 12% roll on an item and you only have 11% in your affix, if you salvage the 12%, it'll put it into the codex for you. Um, so that's what that symbol's indicating is that there's a version of that that you can upgrade to get into the codex. Um, the other thing is the greater affixes. So these are a cool new system that essentially makes it so some gear um, will have a certain number of affixes that are a higher role, like they're in a whole different band than the normal affix roles that can fall on an item. Not the legendary affixes, just the normal affixes. We can try to find an example of what one of these looks like quick. Here, so you can see this has plus six fury on kill and it's got this special little star icon. This also will have an, a star icon on it in the inventory. You can see it right there and you can see it on some of the uh, items this character has equipped. Um, you'll also be able to see that visibly in the world, the star icon will uh, be after the name of the item when it drops. 
Um, so, you know, this is going to be pretty obvious. I don't think it's anything that one could really miss, but it will add a whole layer of excitement because you can get one, two, three of these affixes can be at that tier. It's going to be really rare to get three, but it's possible. Um, so it'll be kind of a fun chase mechanic to see what people can get, uh, as they're loot farming and trying to get perfect rolls. But something to note here is that if you go and you do um, an enchant on these, it seems to downgrade the item. At least it did in the PTR. Something might change here, there may be a warning, but this is the last big thing I wanna call out is don't enchant the greater affix rolls Unless, say, there's like three greater affix rolls and you don't care about one of them and you just want it to be something else because it does seem that that will just remove it. It's not going to like replace it with another greater affix roll. I think that's it. I'll be playing and uh, checking out the season right away, right at launch on Tuesday. So if you want to come hang out on Twitch, I always appreciate it. That's why I do this. I love talking to the community and and hanging out with people. If you have any questions before then, again, I'll have a link to the Discord in the video description. Always feel free to leave a comment. I try to get to all of those as well. I definitely read them all and I answer all the questions I can. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned and uh, hopefully we have a clean season four launch here. Have a good one.